Beyond. 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 Really, yep, yep. just awful. Stop. Beyond. Please stop it. Good Lord. Uh, that gets worse every week. Beyond. Uh, welcome to Podcast better. Beyond. It gets worse. Podcast uh, what? Podcast um, Beyond. 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 Please, beyond. Stop. Please stop. Please stop. Podcast Beyond, episode 410. Mm. Uh, it's a PlayStation podcast. I think, sometimes, we try. I'm Max Scoville. Joining me, Andrew Goldfarb. Brat, brat. Brian Altano. I'm sad. <laughs> and Jared Petty. I don't have a pithy anecdote or catchphrase. Uh, I thought we gave you one. You did. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. Preach it. I don't know. Testify. You just yell sweet yeah. code in his uh, arms. You can. Yeah, just speak it in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marty Sleva is normally here, but he's out having his his beard rewoven, rewoven. Yeah. By, uh, Where is he? He's in, Iowa? in his, uh, Wisconsin. He's in his childhood bedroom, and Iowa. he hasn't had a drink in days. Is the last the last text I got from oh, him. Oh, so he's wow. in a he's, so he's in a detox prison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Great. Wow. All so right. If you're listening to this at home, never become anything like that. All right, yep. so um, a, and we, know how old you are. We yeah. are a, a little bit recording with the with a fire under our ass <laughs> and a gun to our heads because mm-hmm. we are doing this a day late because last night there was the big TGS Sony press event, yep. press keynote conference Yay. thing, whatever whatever you call that. Uh, Goldfarb, you stayed up real late past your bedtime. I so did. You need to pay attention to what they announced. What uh, they announced? Uh, I'm a real tired boy. Uh, they announced a lot. Uh, I guess we can pretty much go through all these. I will say this um, is probably one of the biggest. Uh, press conferences have ever done at TGS like yes. tons of huge stuff well it's yeah. really interesting how this conference has evolved because it was the SCEJA conference which yeah. was like very for Asian territories and now it's kind of become these further reaching announcements um, like a couple years ago we got like PSV to TV and then that slowly ended up coming west and it's mm-hmm. just interesting watching this is sort of like it's almost like cheating it's like getting like like Cliff's notes for what they will announce in the West. Yep. So I think like mm-hmm. their Paris Games Week conference, I'm assuming we'll see most of the things here that only apply to Japan will see apply to the West. I think a lot of that is because uh, it's been sort of the last two or three years specifically in this console generation. It's felt like Sony is no longer really, or the PlayStation isn't really just like a Japanese thing anymore. Like oh, yeah. the, the PlayStation is huge. It is the biggest, the best selling console in the world right now by a very large mm-hmm. margin. So any announcements you see anywhere, like pretty much have to extend to us because you're going to have a large enough group of people being like, give me that. Yeah, well, and I think, so that's a perfect segue into the first thing, which is that uh, they dropped the price of the PS4 in Japan by uh, what's equivalent to roughly 100 bucks. Yeah. Huge. Uh, which is gigantic. Like, if this happens in the U.S., that's a very big deal because, like, yeah, the install base is already really, really big. Yeah. And this can make it potentially a lot mm-hmm. bigger. Yeah, and it's I, I looked like... it up. It's about time. Uh, historically, if you look at last generation, it's been what, out about two years now. We're getting up on that mark. It was yeah. about the two-year point. They dropped the price of higher-end models earlier than this last generation because they were like, oh, my gosh, we overpriced this thing. And because they the, had a bunch of weird Right. Like, a weird bunch models. of SKUs. Yeah, yeah. But now this thing with, with one main SKU, uh, they, they didn't actually drop their lowest price skew until about two years in and that's well, what we're looking and, at and now if you think about the ps3 era like they dropped the skew they dropped the, the price uh, because they had to yeah like it wasn't doing well they don't right. really need to do this right now so it's kind of awesome that they are like, yeah well, and of, it's so competitive no like, it's oh my like, God, yeah to back this up for a second this is uh this is in japan wasn't it wasn't it more expensive in japan or wasn't it like they so frequently believe, do that where it's like stuff is if you if you do convert it and yeah. even even with exchange rate in place they charge more for it and even in like Australia, they um, they charge a lot more for games and, and hardware than they do here equivalently. Mm-hmm. I mean, like that's the thing, right? Like even the interesting thing about any of the news here is like even if it is specific to Asia or even specific to Japan, it's actually really interesting because like even if this just evens it out with mm-hmm. the U.S. price, like that's still really smart and competitive. Yeah, this is yeah. also mm-hmm. like this. It, uh, even if it's just a, just a price drop in Japan, this is a, just one more nail in the Xbox's coffin over yep. there. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's cool. Hopefully that comes over this a ways. Um, other big thing is the wonderful, exciting Project Morpheus has been renamed to PlayStation VR, which is... Which is like a boring name, but it makes... It, so it reminds me of uh, Kinect was Project Natal for the longest mm-hmm. time. Right? And right. we all called it that for like two years, and then they actually named it, and everyone was like, oh, that's so weird, and then you get used to it. Like, this makes sense. This always was going to be called PlayStation VR. Like, that's a perfectly just like accurate title, and yeah. they, they were never going to release a product called Project Morpheus, you know? like Even it's, if it's it had, like, Lawrence Fishburne packaging? Yeah, I mean, exactly. That would have been amazing. A like Cowboy Curtis on every box. Just I, it like... just, it's really interesting to me that I feel like I forgot that was a code name. I think uh, it's very smart. It's sort of... Uh... 
leveraging their their brand name is probably a smart thing to do in a yeah. situation where people are there's still so much uncertainty mm -hmm. like around VR like calling something Morpheus mm -hmm. and putting it on a shelf people are like what the hell is that well it's entirely still, yeah. it's entirely self-explanatory we also heard that the you know the veto was well the veto was kind of a weird thing on its own because like what a veto means life yeah Lindsay Lohan has a tattoo that says the Dolce Vita why do I know that <laughs> uh, that's a little weird and then like the the, the PlayStation 4 was, it was gonna be the Orbis for a second yeah. you yep. know and we were like oh maybe it's gonna be the or Forbis Orbis means round and then we're just in Morpheus kind of ties in with that but it's just sort of like PlayStation VR it's entirely self-explanatory well they, yep. they know we're gonna buy it no matter what it's called uh, the people in the community that are listening well, to this unless right? it's or at least like a thousand dollars yeah I mean, like, I'm price, still sure. very curious to see what that thing will cost I and still how, call my but, GameCube the Dolphin but I think <laughs> but I think they're throwing this name out there for a and broad audience Nintendo I mean, Revolution <laughs> yeah. Project oh, Cafe God. Project I remember, Cafe. Oh. But, uh, I remember people finding little screenshots of like a stupid coffee cup and they're like Project Cafe every blog roll image on IGN for like a year and a half was like a steaming coffee mug yeah it was really stupid yeah I forgot about the Dolphin that Windows with Chicago for a while. Yeah, we uh, used, but, so we used pictures of Morpheus from Metal Gear Solid but, Five was Ogre. But I do know that's that weird. I guess something Vita weird. Was just NGP when they announced yeah. it. Oh, God. Next, next gen, next portable. portable. Yeah. But something weird happened on Sunday. I was watching football, uh, watching NFL football for, for opening week. No, I love I love the <laughs> NFL actually. Uh, Were you being bullied in your own uh, home? No, or? not at all. Chris Abbott and I sit down watching the football and. Um, uh, they were playing. <laughs> they were playing with an Oculus on the sportscast. It's like the color commentary guys in the booth, and one of them is wearing an Oculus headset, talking about how the team is using it to uh, to do drills with the quarterback. And here you have like sportscaster guy in a suit, not video game dude, kind of ha ha, and he's got he's like this is awesome. I was like, yep, okay, this is this is the year. You it's know, coming. Be between that We're, and like fantasy football, which is basically an RPG <coughs> for jocks, yep. like they're, yeah. nerds are nerds are in everything now. Just it's, pretty awesome. it's pretty awesome. I We're think all it, on the same page. VR is a thing is really weird. Uh, Marty was at Tempest, which uh, Beyond fans may know is the place where that Knock and Boots Live was the day yep. after Beyond 300. Um, and there was the dude at the bar like wearing an Oculus headset and doing some weird tech demo just in the middle of a bar at like 7 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, please Saturday. steal that guy's wallet. And mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think Sink or Swim, this is the year. This year or next is the one where everybody's going to be talking about it. And I don't know whether it's going to be like, you know, what was what was the darn thing that everybody got? A second life. You know, I don't know if this is going to be the second life of this generation where the news cares and nobody else does, or if this is going to be the thing that comes into our living rooms and take living rooms and takes over. I so don't know thing, which yet, but I'm really interested to see how it plays out. I want this to work. I love VR stuff. I think but. like even if if some of these VR sets got the success that Second Life saw, like Second Life was immensely popular with a mm -hmm. very kind of medium sized group of people. Yeah. Right. It right. didn't really take over the world. But it did bubble up in the mainstream a lot. Like New York Times wrote articles. That's what I mean. Second like Life, it became like, like a big media thing, but the media far out, out, outweighed its yeah. actual impact on totally. the community. And that's I hope that VR doesn't become that. That's it what was, I'm worried about. It was like PlayStation Home where people talked about it more than they actually used exactly. it. Yeah, we kind of like we talk badly about it, but there was a very yeah. healthy, active. I don't know if they were healthy. There were or active. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a very specific group of people that that played. They put a lot of time into that. So we'll see. Yeah. Let's call them earnest. Earnest. Um, earnest. Yeah. 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 I think the uh, importance of it, being. It'll. I think the input will matter a lot. I think Oculus Touch is really cool and precise. I yeah. think uh, what I've I haven't really done that much with Morpheus, so you know I want to try it mm -hmm. out, especially as it as it comes closer to being like an actual consumer product. But um. I don't know, I think it'll depend on how precise you can get and, and how good it feels, because um, Oculus Touch is weird as hell looking, but mm -hmm. it's smart and like works uh, in a way that I hope Morpheus can. Yeah, um, the Oculus Touch, I got to play with that at, uh, what was that last thing Games I went Com? to? Pax. Was it Games? It was PAX, I think. Yeah. It might have been PAX, yeah, but it was like, Probably both. it was less comfortable to use. Like, it felt like I wasn't sure which of my motions were doing something, and it was like, the it was responsive and everything, but it has a bunch more buttons, and you're still and you're using your actual fingers and and buttons. And at it's the same like time. mittens, like you're not doing yeah. like individual finger controls, like it's oven great. mitts, like, it's like, like uh, yeah, it's, it's literally oven mitts. It's but yeah, it's like penguin fingers. Okay. Little, yeah, cooking mama simulator so for all it, of then. these okay. things. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a lot to get through. Bloodborne, you like that game? I love that I'm game. I'm pointing yeah. to Brian for yeah. you audio listeners. Yeah, DLC looks um, awesome or expansion, whatever. So we're it's calling uh, it. yeah, the old hunters. Uh, it's twenty bucks, uh, November twenty fourth, separately, um, and then early December they're actually going to have, which I think I'm going to pick up uh, in play for Christmas break. Sounds perfect. It's a copy of Bloodborne that includes this. Yeah. So it's the Old Hunters edition. Mm -hmm. yep. um, same price includes this. That's real cool. Yeah, I, I tweeted out my five favorite games this year so far this morning. That was That's on there 100%. Uh, what were the other four? Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, Super Mario Maker, uh, Lara Croft Go, 
and uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. How nice. crazy is it? Like, that's such a good list. How crazy is it that we still have Battlefront, Fallout yeah, 4? Totally. Uh, like, there's so many things coming that it's just insane. That's I mean, the actual Tomb Raider. Also, like, it was just weird <laughs> that, like, my list includes, uh, like, two platforming games. One of them is based on an engine from 1985. Mm -hmm. It's got a top down isometric puzzle game on iOS. It's yeah. got a. A uh, serious war-based stealth game where you can send animals away in balloons, and it has a nightmare world where you have to fight evil horse monsters with a chainsaw sword. Yep. Speaking of evil horse monsters with a chainsaw Good sword, year. I think it's interesting that uh, they also said Bloodborne sold two million copies, yeah, mm -hmm. which is a lot for. I mean, like again, I, I think that's a testament to how big the or how well PS4 is doing in general. Yeah, it's an that exclusive. There, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are games like this that can do that well in that short of an amount of time that are pretty niche. I think it's like, also when, like a game that's like severely punishing and yeah. really pushes people away from it and like so you yeah. actively stops you from playing it in the first few hours because it's so frustrating. And I, think I, about, I told a story on the show about how I almost quit it and oh. I came back to it. So Think about when Demon's Souls came out and yeah. Yeah. imagine <laughs> imagine uh, reading a news story that like a successor to that sold 2 million copies. Yeah. That's and shocking. The, the expansion is just like, it's everything I want in like sort of video game DLC or expansions. Yeah. Like it's new environments, it's new bosses, it's new characters, it's new weapons. Uh, I don't know how much of it will really carry over to the main game or if that even really matters because like the to me, the most amazing thing about Bloodborne was uh, finding a completely new area yeah. and traversing it for the first time, completely like unbeknownst to what's going to happen, and fighting bosses that I didn't know existed, and then getting a weapon that I didn't know I could have, and yeah. yep. leveling it up and stuff like that. So being able to do that uh, for twenty bucks is is really awesome in lieu of getting a sequel anytime soon. So yep, for yeah, sure. also really, that's really gonna awesome. that's gonna give it a, a nice kind of you know kick in the butt yep. because it's that's coming out. Um, November twenty fourth, and yeah. then it's getting a retail version with the with the main game, I yep. think, yep. which is mm -hmm. like sort of basically game of the year edition already. Yep. And that's coming that's out December fourth, nice. Jay Z's birthday. <laughs> so if Jay Z hasn't played Bloodborne, that's his. That's his perfect gift for him. Now uh, he's going to get a million copies of Bloodborne. And kudos <laughs> to From for sticking on their guns and producing such a polarizing game and doing it, knowing it's polarizing in an age where it's you know suits are arguing for safe. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then not, not, only being yeah. Rewarded, well not only being rewarded yeah. by uh, their audience playing, but then in return rewarding their audience by doing something like yeah. this. Yeah, so, so this great. Really for awesome. sure. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> keeping it going, Gravity Rush, which I loved uh, a lot Did you? on Vita. Oh, my God, so much. Yeah. I know Greg, uh, gave, it like a, Greg um, gave it like a seven because the targeting stuff, but um, yeah, it, I almost I really, loved it. Really liked I, that yeah. World. Like, I love the Vita, but I think it does so much better with, like, small games, yeah. you know? Something like, I, I think that the... The amount of detail and like the depth of field stuff and the accelerometer all at once in something it was really disorienting. That's small, yeah. but it was. I think again, like that was a victim of coming out in early 2012. Yep. It was a launched. It wasn't a launch title, but shortly after, um, and it was that thing where like they felt like they had to put that tech into everything. Yep. I think a uh, sequel is very exciting. Um, yeah, I, the, the, the game is gorgeous. It's got <clears> awesome. I art love direction, that world. I love that. Me art. too. Yeah. And I, I really want to give it another chance. So this There's is a cat cool. in it. Well, you hang first, out with a cat. If you weren't a fan of the accelerometer stuff, you can get the HD version first, and that's yep. um, so, that's coming out. February, February in the U.S., uh, in Europe, December yeah. in um, the in Japan. I'm uh, very and, happy to hear that that's not coming in November. I yeah. know, right? No, uh, what's, well, what's cool is, about it is basically November too. Yeah, so. that's true. Mm -hmm. What's cool about it is uh, Blue Point's doing it, and those are like the guys you want making yeah. your HD port. Uh, they're they doing did. Uncharted. Gear. They did yeah. Eco. They did Metal Gear. Yeah, they do all, all the all the best ports. Um, I think they did Titanfall for 360 as well. Hmm. I um, want to give a shout out to uh, to the collector's edition there. I'm not usually into collector's editions. I'm not crazy about statues because usually the ones they come packed with are they're real, like posed in they're really like awkward. real crappy PVC <laughs> yeah. and yeah. basically the paint ops of an action figure. This just comes yeah. with an action figure, which for some reason just it seems much more reasonable. Yep. Yeah, it's a, I, it's a little action figure <laughs> cat. It comes with a cat and an apple. Put it on. I'm a pretty excited for that that little cat figure. I kind of yeah. want that. It's a um, nice toy. But yeah, this is cool, and uh, I don't know. I, I I'm excited to learn more about what that game is. Yep. Um, really confusing announcement. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Can I just, uh, can I just read this? This is, I want to point out, it's not Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. It is Kingdom Hearts Roman numeral <laughs> 2 point Arabic numeral 8. <laughs> Final chapter prologue. Well, this this yeah. is a series that's already had a game that was like titled with an equation. Three fifty eight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's and just this like there's already a long division in place in this series. At this, this point, is in this, game. this is such an like they've totally gone 
off the rails into the deep end <laughs> after year like that this game started off as this sort of synergy between Final Fantasy characters and like the Lion King and now it's suddenly <laughs> this experiment in words yeah <laughs> I love like, it you've it's got, you've got the most single like as far as a, a, a Japanese studio making something for a western audience you've got the most recognizable western cartoons yeah side by side with you know basically Final Fantasy characters and then you've got a naming convention that is a, a literal puzzle in itself. Yeah. yeah but it's this really... includes uh, Dream Drop Distance, which is yep. hard to say. Yeah, that's the 3DS game. Right. Birth by Sleep 0 0.2, which and... biologic should be in pre-alpha stages right now, based <laughs> on... Uh, and Scenes for Unchained X, which I'm pretty sure is a Power Man 5000 Didn't... album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we talk about, recently, there was a, a job listing for... Kingdom Hearts 2.9. 2.9? So that's, uh, I think that has to be this. I'm hoping. <laughs> I hope here, so, because it's kind of the really worst so. game. Yeah. The really confusing yeah. thing is like the release scheme of this, because I, I could be wrong because I haven't super followed this, but I think the other Kingdom Hearts HD stuff, Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, is on PS3. Oh, I don't don't ask I me to correct you. I, I don't understand. I might be wrong. I, I don't I understand Kingdom Hearts anymore. I oh, really, really? want to play. Yeah. I want to replay. It sounds really accessible and totally <laughs> no. understandable. I really want to replay at least one and two. Um, because I never finished two, and I would love to do that on PS4. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I can do that, but I'm probably wrong. I should look that up. Yeah. I'm very tired. You yeah. also um, you won't you won't do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Yakuza. Yakuza. Yeah. Yay! The, the first is, uh, game Jared is Petty getting joint. first game is getting an HD remaster remake, which looks real pretty. And yeah. then there's a new there's that's gonna have a demo for Yakuza 6 on it. Mm -hmm. Jared, what's up with these games? Because I've I've <sighs> never gone near them. They are... They're odd. Yeah. Uh, y yeah. Yakuza games are good, and they're, they're good in a way that nothing else is. They're good with... It, you need to... You're going to have to take a grain of salt with that. They are... The structure is kind of bizarre. It's mission-oriented open world mixed up. They get stuff cut out of them in the American versions a lot. There's you In know, the there's, trailer for the, the HD remake, uh, a grown man slaps a, a little girl in the face. A small girl in a bar. <laughs> that's actually from the original Yakuza. That scene okay. was from the, that's a kind of a well, famous scene from the first uh, one. I'm glad that they're not changing anything yeah. and keeping it, keeping it okay, fresh. Okay, so for... it's, it's crime melodrama. Um, it, it's sort of like if GTA were just like utterly, utterly self-aware, mm -hmm. uh, it would be Yakuza. It'd be like, hey, we're a daytime Korean television drama about the mob, the video game. I like that's the idea of like a weird is. Woody Allen breaking the fourth wall of GTA game. The, yeah, that, that's kind of what Yakuza sort of <laughs> feels like. It's just like, we know what we are. This is melodrama, unapologetic. Um, the open worlds tend to be small, but full of things to do. Some of the American versions get things kind of, there's a, there's a lot of interface issues. It's kind of clunky and, and sort of what we were talking about last week mm -hmm. with strange interfaces. But the games are fascinating. They alternate between uh, bizarre violence, melodrama, uh, dress up doll games, utterly offensive content, okay. and occasionally tremendous role playing moments. So uh, Japan. Interesting. Yeah, really, really fascinating games that aren't quite like anything else. Yakuza Five still hasn't come to America, despite being released several years ago in Japan. They keep promising we're is gonna that get the a weird zombie ish one or is uh, that... what five I haven't played it because that hasn't yeah, come oh, over, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, it's supposed to come this fall to America, finally, we'll see, uh, on PSN. Uh, the other four have come over and um, they are unlike anything else and totally worth your time. Uh, cool. Possibly the furthest thing from a Japanese self-aware open world game is Jack the Ripper. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, they Weird announced... place to announce this. Yeah, this is, it, it almost felt like, oh, crap, there's only one conference left before we come out in October, so we have to announce it there. Yeah, um, yeah they announced uh, Jack the Ripper DLC for Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is, I mean, like, the minute they said Victoria in London, I immediately wanted Jack the Ripper. Right. My concern about Jack the Ripper in the Assassin's Creed universe is that you know they're going to be like, oh, he's actually an assassin and the people he killed are all Templars or something. I don't know. Uh, like, I, I can see this going very badly. Uh, I do really like the mood the trailer sets, though. Mm -hmm. I love the key art. It's like Jack the Ripper with like a super f***ed up, uh, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, like face wrap. Um, he looks really scary and weird. Um, but I, I'm into the idea of this. I just hope they don't... Um, make it to Assassin's Creed E. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that said, they announced this as part of the season pass, which seems kind of, it's like the most by the numbers season pass I, thing I've seen. I just We talked about DLC last week. Um, really, really crass to announce DLC before a game is released, I think. And then immediately be like, buy our season pass and pre-order it and mm -hmm. buy this edition and get the season pass included. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. kind of like the new movement now. I mean, mm -hmm. we, yeah. they, they, I mean like, did I, you see what they did with Bethesda did with, with Fallout? Where they're just like, 
virus season pass, we don't know where we're putting in it yet. But that was kind of like the Batman sense. thing again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Bethesda was at least a little more frank about it, where like Pete Hines was kind of like, hey, like if you don't want to buy this, don't buy it. But yeah. it's like mm-hmm. it's available if you do. I at least respect that because mm-hmm. there are people who know they're gonna I mean, do you that. You also look at like their games, like the Bethesda's track record with DLC. Yeah. It's, it's aside from the horse armor, you know, I think they kind of learned their lesson there. It's sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's See, a know, bit to less me, like man. a lot of the Fallout DLC was kind of all over the place. Uh, it definitely I liked, was all over the place. I liked the Fallout 3 DLC for the most part. I thought the New Vegas DLC was awful. Yeah. Um, I did not get into it at all. Especially yeah, that first I, one I mean, where you're in the collar and you, you explode and stuff. I have a tough oh. time justifying preemptively purchasing a season pass for something that I don't have any idea what's It's pretty weird there. that we buy yeah. anything before it's out. Yeah. Just yeah. in general. Just yeah. across Pre-order the board. in general. I agree. And I mean, like, it's, it's this weird arms race where, like, they do this because they need those that first week sales figure i guess it's yeah. almost like how movies are so front loaded for like they really want the opening weekend numbers that, that yeah. is almost more important than mm-hmm. than the tale of what they do it's really interesting i think um, it's it, 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 short answer that's because people have like it's, it's a yearly you know financial fiscal year stuff where they're like we yeah. got to have this done by this mm-hmm. point by yeah. the before the yeah. quarter ends yeah i think you're mm-hmm. absolutely right um uh ubisoft didn't stop there Jared's real excited. Uh, they talked a little bit about For Honor, showed a new trailer, yeah. and talked about the samurai class. Yeah, they showed a samurai guy, the Oni, uh, which is Japanese for it. Oni's like a kind of uh, a monster demon. It and, Oni uh, does everything. Ah, it Oni does. Ugh. Excellent. You know, uh, I, I, you I, tangled my there. funny bone. Don't touch yeah. me. There we are. Uh, Both of you yeah. what, need that? to just hug on the top of a hill and roll away from this conversation. <laughs> I would love to hug Andrew on a hill and then roll down it in his warm embrace. King of the Mountain. Yeah, I'd be good with that. I think that would be very cuddly. But yeah, so we got the Oni, and I, I like this. Uh, For Honor looks really cool to me. Uh, I, I think that, I, I you know, it's it looks like non-crappy Dynasty Warriors, and I, yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Hero versus hero, maybe a little Bushido Blady stuff thrown in. But yeah, we got we got this guy they're talking about I things like... I just called it that. Non-crappy what's that? Dynasty non-crappy Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors. I mean, then again, they're also they're also revealing... Uh, I mean, which studio is... It's Ubisoft. It's French for all... Yeah, for all intents. I think it's happening in Montreal. Montreal, yeah. okay. So yeah. it's it's a it's a Western game involving Samurai, and they're revealing it at, at TGS. It seems you know, kind of ballsy. You yeah. Know? Yeah, but, Ubisoft but having yeah, a Check out this non-crappy Dynasty Warriors, and they're all like... Well, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. it's built like around these games. kind of battlefield heroes and, you know, facing off in the middle. You know, you got... It's sort of like all the other guys are the backdrop for the movie moment when, like, Mel Gibson finally finds whoever he's going to kill on that battlefield that he's wanted to kill the whole Or movie. when Tom Cruise, the last Samurai, has it, his big epic showdown. Exactly. That kind of thing. And then all the other guys are just dying in the background and this happens and he stabs you with the American flag or whatever. Um, but I think so that, this is like that except you have that actually eats happens an in a cherry movie. pie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Kisses his mom on the cheek. I got tickled. Uh, Samurai got but I love what they say. Okay, <laughs> skilled duelist, dog. quick and lethal, and then they say inspires fear. So I'm wondering, like, yep. is this guy just like, ah, and everybody's like, ah, and runs away. Uh, so he run out of uh, real sentences? To yeah, there? I love it. Um, he's got a kunai, which are the cool little, like, the pointed shuriken. And again, that's a Bushido blady type weapon. I think I'm just excited about this, the thought of having a dueling game at yeah. last. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. this is a really interesting, I mean, yeah, it's, the TGS conference in general is interesting because, like you were just saying, it is this weird mix of like Western stuff with like Eastern stuff, and yeah. it's like weirdly Bloodborne is in the same conference as Dark Souls, and like this is in the but same the Japanese, conference. But the Japanese, they're, like, they're not. They're not. Okay, I, I, here, Jared, you just said it, you just said a kunai was a pointed shuriken. I would say it's a less pointed shuriken in that it is a throwing knife. Oh, well, it is a throwing knife, but it also counts as... Sh- okay, so shuriken just means sharp, like... No, like I'm going to actually you hard blade. right now. Shuri is oh, hand oh, and, you and just can actually, is blade. You just counter-actually me. No, it just means handheld blade. Uh, a kunai is a, is hey, a up, subclass of shuriken. Yeah, I'm not bad. Right, a little so, tired. Probably anyway, right. yeah, Shuri is hand... <laughs> yeah, right. I miss you, too. It's, it's, been good. Good. Right. it's yeah. good to see you, though. Yeah, so handheld blade, a kunai is a subclass of shuriken. All right, moving on. But talking about the East meets West thing and about how bold that is, I remember I had the opportunity. I lived in a town in Japan where they handcraft katana to this day, and have been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's one. Of, it's near where Nobunaga uh, lived. It's a steel crafting center. One of the best moments of my life was getting to hold Hakuna katana. A, okay, that's great. I got to hold a 400-year-old samurai sword that a guy had brought in for repair. And Did it, you it, drop it? it was, no, I didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's like but that old it had a, you know, it has this ray, like, has this ray skin <laughs> handle. You swing it through the air, and it actually makes a hum like a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just and it feels just it feels like death in your hands. It's like but, that Hattori Hanzo scene from uh, Kill Bill. From Kill Bill. Yeah. But hanging from the end of the handle with this ancient, beautiful ray skin grip is a cartoon hamster on a keychain that the guy that owns the sword has put on there. That's the best. That wow! There is a wonderful, you know, crossover stuff 
East meets West, goofy with traditional. The Japanese don't have nearly as big a problem with that as we do. So, you know, moderation for them is often two extremes. So yeah. I think something like this works, actually. I think, I think it's, it's a great really pitch. interesting. Let's try and get through these last two really Sorry. quick. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Um, OK, very quickly, uh, Dragon Quest Builders. Um, we had seen this a while ago, and now yeah. has a release date in Japan. It's sort of Dragon Quest Minecraft. Yeah, uh, Minecraft with slimes. That's all we need in the world. They should have yeah. given Slimecraft. Yeah, Slimecraft. That's really good. And it's oh, on Vita, so good. yay. Um, that's so good. opportunity. No, Slimecraft, that's good. Just for me to nerd out for one second, uh, Danganronpa 3 got announced. Uh, really interestingly, for PS4 as well as Vita, I wonder if they'll bring 1 and 2 to PS4 as well. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really weird visual novel series. Uh, super interesting. You very short version is that you're a bunch of high school age kids trapped in a school in the first one, and the idea is uh, a crazy person or bear in this case is taken over the school <laughs> and forces you to kill each other in order to leave. Um, every death you investigate. Uh, it's super interesting. There's a trial at the end. You have to pick who is the murderer. Okay, so super I've, smart games. I've heard about this dumb game series for like three years now, and no one's explained it in a way that actually makes it sound as awesome as you just did right there. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's really smart. Uh, People are also like, it's like a book, you, a Japanese book you read on your Vita with your toe. And I'm like, I mean, it is, but it's, it's super, super, super interesting. Yeah, I love the characters. Yeah, but high school kids fighting a, a possessed de a demon bear. Yep. So I don't I don't know what this, I, I, I can barely say it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I know dang it's- Dang, dang, the the ding dory. dang rom coms. We used to talk about um, King Dodango, Dodango from Bakrin of Time. Uh, I just knew that it was like it's kind of it's a it's a good JRPG on mm. on Vita. And when I got Metal Gear, I was like, all right, I got a I I need a tactical diversion, so I just bought that for my my fiance Jen. Uh, she texted me this morning. They announced a new Dang and Ronpa game yesterday, which is perfect because I just finished mine. And I got two girls to give me panties. So there we go. I yeah, yeah. that's you one get, weird thing in the second game. As you up your like social links, people give you their underwear. Very strange. Yeah. Very Japanese. But no, it's. It, I think you would like it. You would like it aesthetically, Brian, because it's actually really cool. Because I love bears. Well, <laughs> yes. But also bears every time great. when you walk into a room, but hate it's high this school. weird. <laughs> it's this weird like 2D construction where the room is built in front of you in a second. And it's, just, it's all in first person. It's super interesting. Can't recommend those games enough. Uh, really, really into them. Please talk to me about them on Twitter because I don't know anyone who likes them. Sure. Tweet um, it. Tweet it uh, please be Andrew my Goldfarb friend on the computer. High school bear. Uh, so, last thing, uh, something that was missing for the conference was Persona 5. They showed about a minute and a half of new footage in the, there were probably less than that, in the intro sizzle reel, um, but then it wasn't mentioned during the show. There's a Persona event uh, Saturday afternoon in Japan, which is like late night Friday uh, Pacific time. Um, that's where I'm guessing we guess the, get the release date. Maybe PS2 classics of Persona 3 and 4. That would yep. be cool on PS4. Um, but I do want to say very quickly, uh, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I've been playing a bunch of it. The embargo just lifted so I can finally talk about it. I got the Platinum. It is a super, super fun, weird game. Very fan service -y. If you like Persona 4, you can see a bunch of people dancing together. Incredible remixes, like all the songs in the game. Um, I'm not into rhythm games at all, but the story mode is really interesting, mm -hmm. and you actually barely dance mm -hmm. in the story mode. Like, there's free dance where you can dance a ton, but the story mode, sorry to use this phrase again, is basically a visual novel. Oh, um, is the story oh, mode really? Called, yeah, really? It's Some of the night? really interesting. Why yeah. would they call it dancing, dancing a little and bit. then not let you do that? Well, it's really, I mean, like, the Persona 4 spin off series, like, uh, uh, Arena and Ultimax and now this are all this weird visual novel format yeah. where you have first person narration written out on the screen and then you have kind of these vignette cutscenes and then randomly fight people or dance or whatever the subject of that spinoff is but that's not really the focus like the story is really I am suddenly suddenly much more interested in, in buying this because I, you know, I love P4G and, and Persona in general but I stink at rhythm games so I thought this would be a bad pick for me and uh, it's also it reminded me of Guitar Hero way back in the day where you start on easy because I'm like I don't play guitar and you just have three notes and then you're like okay like I'm getting good enough I'll try normal and then you're like really good at normal and you're like I'm just going to try the easiest song on hard difficulty and you'd like you have that sense of progression if this um, if this job doesn't work out for you, you you need to work at like a, a video game store. And when people come in and, and they try to ask, you what if far fall? <laughs> it, it would be a dark. It, I mean, things would be I, rough. Not that there's any wrong with a video game store. So but I, just I, gotta, I like that. Like your ambitious career path for me is like. Well, no, it's it's my if everything goes horribly awry. Okay, that's fair. You. But that's you're really fair. good at explaining video games that uh, I think people are otherwise are extremely confused. You about. could also just lie, and we wouldn't really be able to call you on it. That's sure. true. Uh, I. I just had a really weird reaction that I've never had when someone's talking about a game. You're sexually aroused. No, not <laughs> not yet. Uh, but you just said you don't you don't have to dance, but dance is in the title. And I think the last time I heard that was in middle school when someone's like, "Oh no no, it's uh you don't have to dance at the high, at the dances. Yeah, you the, just, boys, you just no. the boys out. hang out over here. And like the girls you can just hang out you can just there. hang out. Also, they have a room full of games, and I'm like, oh go on, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's really weird to hear that. Like a game that has dancing in the title. It, it, very, yeah, all yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, you don't have to dance. I'm like, this, I, like... You don't even have to dance bit. some of the night. That yeah. feels like like I just a just a slight slight interest in like a social event that I otherwise was totally mm-hmm. yeah. It's uh, real, real strange. It's weird. Hey. I was gonna try this out, but I'm thrilled to hear about it now. You this know what's great. what's a really important thing is the dog naming contest. Oh yeah, because of our email. <laughs> Yay! That was such a good idea. I got probably no joke. 500 yeah, tweets of 500. dog names and dog yeah. pictures, yeah. and then you guys emails. got emails. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was great. And Brian was so grumpy about it. It was cute. You're, you don't yeah, usually I, I love that today I'm, I'm just walking by Brian's desk, and I just hear him yelling at Max, like, I had to search for dog, and then check all the emails marked dog and delete them, and I like my dog emails. Which I have a problem with, because generally, I think if you get an email about a dog, it's probably an email you want to read. But so many of these were good. I mean, I, okay, I was yeah. laughing out loud. Really. Like, all, oh, a lot of them were so, good. Brian, just... Set up filters. Just have a folder that just says beyond. Especially and it's, on Gmail. Skip, skip it's the so inbox. easy. Just, just, I understand all that. It doesn't save the fact that this was a bad idea. Okay. It was a I, one. No one, no one at a job should get hundreds of emails that just say, the dog, and you open it up and it says, bark. <laughs> that shouldn't be a thing. It should never be a thing. Even having to click those with your finger I want to call out a half a second. Some of, our, some of our listeners for not listening hard enough. And yeah. We we said just make the subject of the email. Yeah. We we were very very specific, so it makes it easy to look through everything. But some people who are like, first of all, I would like to say that I am a fan of the show. Thank you for listening. Thank you. But yeah. then going in, and be like, I, uh, after careful consideration, I have decided to name the dog. It's just just write the name. There anyway, was, there, there, there so was got, the really polite guy that wrote and was like, I just heard again listening that there was a cutoff. I'm yeah, so some of you guys, sorry. It was, there was a little hiccup where it was they sent the same email again with a different subject. Yeah, he's like, I'm so oh, sorry I, I did that. I don't want to get any of guys' case. I'm just, no, I'm just, they were I'm just nice. goofing. That sounds um, kind of adorable. Yeah, he was, was sweet. A lot of really emails about dogs. Um, I think we got multiple submissions for a couple of sort of more obvious ones, which I love a whole lot, and it was hard not to pick these, but uh, Rex. Yeah, Metal Gear Rex. I always like the fact that Metal Gear Solid as a title uh, when you consider that the original is, is stars a guy named Solid Snake, it's sort of like, it's like Wreck It Ralph, you know? It's like <laughs> I'm gonna solid it. It's like uh, Super Spy Steve. Like yeah. just, it's kind of like a really, it's a weird nomenclature. Yep. Sure. So I like the idea of Metal Gear Rex being a dog that fights robots. Um, the other one was Big Paws. Like yeah, that's big, like big big boss. Boss. Yeah. Boss. yeah, that yeah. was definitely a thing I, I somebody like should have. I didn't get that pun until you said that. No, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I I'm gonna, uh, was I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come back to you in a second, Brian, when we uh, when we announce the winner, who yeah. you were in support of. Uh, we got some other ones that I liked a lot. Uh, Philip Mudd sent Sniper Wolf, which I thought was oh, cute. That's really that's good. Really uh, good. Daniel, uh, I think we should have sent we should send Philip Mudd a consolation prize just for having that had to go through life with that name. Oh, <laughs> uh, send him no, that's a, that's a tough name. I like uh, that name. Philip Mudd sounds like when you poop your pants. <laughs> no, no, he's like Harry. He's like Harry. Uh, no, I'm very, thank you for listening. You have a very funny name. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. is all I have. I'm sorry okay? about Brian. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Yuri said the Kurt Russell Terrier, which I like a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, good. Uh, that's good. But you can cl- clearly see it's not a, it's not a terrier. Uh, anyway, Sean Flynn had another another uh, another uh, kind of throwback to a boss, which was the furry. Instead of the fury, that just made was... me think of people in suits with yeah, holes cut in yeah. inappropriate places. Yep. yep. Uh, Chris Flanagan had Sergeant Slobber, that's good, which yeah. is like Sergeant Slaughter, '80s action hero, military but man. Of that name, it's a dog that drools. Real yep. good. Uh, <laughs> oh. Bruce Nupik, uh, Rollover Ocelot. That was a that's that was a very so close call contender. Uh, Rollover Ocelot, I like because it just sounds like you're saying the name of a character wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the winner. Is Dennis Burns, who has diamond, dot dot dot, in the rough, spelled uh, like the noise a dog makes. R U F F. Yeah. Diamond in the rough. Right. Nah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So congratulations. And there, if you're guys. mad that we picked a, a dumb uh, winner, I'm sorry. Better luck next time. Yeah. Uh, uh, stay, stay tuned it's for also the next a contest for a dog name. Really like a smart game. contest we do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thanks to uh, Yuichi for sending that code over. Yeah, too. yeah. sure. Uh, for um, that shout from, out to uh, from Konami. Dennis, uh, I hope you enjoy the game. Uh, and Man, I really need to get Metal Gear in play. You really you do. Really do. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Well, if you come up with a good damn dog name this week, maybe you would have had a chance at winning the code. <laughs> dog and. I think Rob. we should have dog naming contests for every game we do. Regardless yeah, I think we do. We can do it for Fallout. I think that you should be the one to pick the winners. I think it should only be. Just uh, it's uh, Baltano at, 
at I'm gonna, IGN.com. I'm actually yeah. going to send a screenshot to Guinness Book of World Records for the world's largest recycling bin on a computer filled with the most emails. It's so cute what makes you angry because these huge things can happen and not bother you I at love, all. No, okay, and like here's, a tiny here's little thing. I love this podcast. I love talking to my friends. I love dogs. I love Metal Gear. I love our audience. I hate the way all of this came out. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking five of my favorite ingredients in the world and making poop soup out of it. <laughs> Soup. Well, you start with poop, and then you have a guy come along and put an onion in it and a carrot, and exactly. by the end, it's really good. Exactly. Yeah. There you are. So it's like when somebody throws up a good meal. Mm, delicious. Just make it stop. Oh gosh. <clears throat> you know that, uh, that financing show where the guy smashes coffee mugs with a baseball bat? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, sh- <laughs> like shouting poop soup is something. <laughs> that's really do. good. I like the analogy of throwing <laughs> up got, a good didn't meal. Did he get that's, fired that's for good. lying? It's I don't. Gosh. I don't watch TV. I don't know what they do <sighs> on there. Are you talking about Mad Money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy fifty thousand <laughs> shares of poop soup. <laughs> People I like, love that he's you can't do that. That's really irresponsible. I love he's in Arrested Development randomly. I know. I hear. Are we doing Essential 50? Yeah, are we doing Essential 50 this week? Um, let's, so, okay, fine. let's come back to that. Um, I, Can we talk we, about Resident Evil real quick? I'm really disappointed yeah. by this. Let's yeah, that was really, yeah, that's yes. good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, so, uh, as, as we've seen in the last few years, a, a lot of uh, video games have been around for a very long time, and we're seeing a lot of anniversaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, right right now is the uh, 30th anniversary of Super Mario. Out of that, we're getting Super Mario Maker. Awesome, incredible, delightful way to sort of celebrate. Uh, Nintendo's been less good with a lot of that stuff, like Metroid. They kind of dropped the ball on Zelda. Yep. They were pretty good with Resident Evil. Dropped the morph ball. They dropped the morph oh, ball. Oh yeah, nice. Resident Dunk. Evil is up there with uh, some of my favorite video game memories of all time. It's one of the greatest video game franchises ever. I realize that it's been completely hit or miss the last few years. Although leading up to uh, this day and age, we've gotten the uh, HD remake of Resident Evil remake, which mm-hmm. is probably the best Resident Evil game. And two um, coming. We got the remake of Resident Evil 2 coming, which is something we never thought would happen. Mm-hmm. We yep. even got a remake of Resident Evil 0, which is like a pretty damn good Resident Evil game, mm-hmm. right? And sort of on the tail end of the tank-controlled ones. So uh, having to see this big 20th anniversary Resident Evil thing, um, I was really, really hoping for the best. Um, I know that, that Resident Evil 6 was completely off the rails. It was a wreck. 5 did not grab me. 4 is, is one of my favorite video games, probably my top five video games ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, they announced last night that a new Resident Evil game is coming, and it's basically uh, focusing on the least favorite part of the Resident Evil series, which is the nameless idiots that run around in Umbrella Corp costumes, <laughs> yeah. with shotguns and guns, this, and shoot zombies. It it's reminded like, me of, like, right after Arkham City came out, there was, like, a Batman shooter game that came out on oh, Gotham City Impostors. Gotham City Impostors. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what this game reminds well, me of. Well, there was yeah. also uh, yeah. Operation <laughs> Raccoon City. Yeah, right. Isn't yeah, this yeah. the same thing? Oh, like, this it was just like, competitive? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was, like, a Call of Duty first person, and you yeah. would ran, run around and pick up like herbs that you would shoot into yourself yeah, yeah. I'm reloading and it was, it was and like third person it was very, yeah. this has worked. Audrey yeah. reviewed that game oh, and, and yeah. this has worked out of the, but Dead Space Extraction for the Wii was fun yeah. uh, the, the, the rail shooter uh, that was actually really and, well and done Capcom's and that was done smart uh, for it. Capcom's yeah. done rail right. shooters before right. you know, yep, like it worked out to variable degrees of success uh, I actually like some of the rail shooters they've done yeah. this to me I mean had you dropped yeah. this last year I'd be like this is a weird diversion but to drop this as part of the anniversary yep. or like this, the big sort of like it's sort of like celebrating your anniversary with your wife by eating poop soup, <laughs> <laughs> burning, burning down your apartment. You're going to get so much poop soup mailed to you now. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, it's illegal to mail poop soup, so you take that. You take that up with Stop the people over saying that word. Yes. So this is like this is a huge bummer for me, man. Like as a as a Resident Evil fan, this is exactly what I don't want. Like, and just as I thought, they're sort of getting it. Like, if you look at what Capcom just did with uh, Mega Man, mm-hmm. like that the the collection, legacy, legacy, legacy collection, collection yeah. which is awesome. Uh, it's on like pretty much every platform. There's there's like tons of like art stuff in there and old ca- character sketches. From oh, we gave it a design. nine. I mean, I, I got to. Re- I was privileged to review yeah. that. That game was super. They're also done. doing really cool stuff with their merchandising. Like they're they're going all out with Mega Man stuff right now. Yeah, but I'm, it's still I'm, it's, it's really still cool a to see. bigger Capcom problem yeah. of like everything Capcom right now is remakes and I mean like yeah, Street Fighter Five looks cool and I'm, yeah. I'm sure it'll be good, but it's still another sequel. Like there's nothing new coming out of Capcom I feel like I would love to see a really like when Capcom came on stage and said they had a new game I got really excited and then it was a Resident Evil game and then it was a disappointing Resident Evil game and it just like I would love to see something out of Capcom that's cool and new and different right now like Deep Down was announced 
three years ago at mm. the PS4 reveal event. We've heard literally like that. That game is, that is three years ago. Anthony Gallegos mm-hmm. wrote that article. Wow, like two jobs ago. Yeah, and like he's that's a how long ago that now. was. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he runs a whole village. They've all um, they've all got wives of their own. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really interesting to me though. Like I. I want to see Capcom do something interesting whether that's with Resident Evil or in general like where is RE7 like right. let's at least see something I mean something. these are like the guys that invented the or sort, not really invented but sort of like kind of at the time perfected the the mainstream zombie video game genre, mm-hmm. right yeah. and now it's been done to death uh, everyone's done different things we saw zombie get ported this year uh, there was you know uh it's just there, there's been fa- I I lost track of how many yeah. zombie games there are, but there's like there there are fast running ones. There's the the parkour one, Dying Light. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many different ways to sort of interpret that, and to see Capcom, the guys who pretty much like created that for what it is, mm-hmm. and not only walk away from it with like five or six Resident Evil games in a row that just became sort of like action games, mm-hmm. including like the back half of RE4, um, which a lot of people forget, but to completely just drop that now. And yeah. just lose all the tension that comes with the zombie genre. Mm-hmm. Well, even the I, don't, the, I, game don't, I feel like they don't understand the appeal of their own properties. Yeah. 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 Maybe they've got some focus group or some spreadsheet somewhere that says what sells and what doesn't, and they're like, let's play to that as opposed to just kind of well, drowning I mean, it out and the, being like, the action game a, sell better than the non action games. Mm-hmm. So that's sure. the, that's the, that's what the, that's the message they're hearing. Well, isn't RE5 okay. the best selling one still? Yeah. And that's that's yeah. the whole thing. And that's the one that like had, you know, it was basically open battlefield areas with character swapping and machine guns and, it, and stuff that like that. felt like yeah. the, kind of the beginning of the precipitous decline oh yeah, yeah. yeah. 4A5 yeah. was, was four, a vast yeah. vast step down like the, fir- the first half of 4 is still some of the yeah. most tense like it wasn't really like jump scare as much yeah. but there was that sort of impending fear of being like I'm in this small town with a guy with a chainsaw and like these psycho yeah. oh no it was a perfect this... combination of you were just capable enough to feel more powerful than you ever had yep. and it was still just tense enough through most of that game to, to feel like you were constantly in danger yeah. And, and I feel I feel like tension. making these like third per- person shooters and first person like sort of multiplayer yeah. like arena based like they're completely missing the point they're completely missing the tension like they're it's it's just taking the brand name and putting on something like this yeah. is this is the Metroid well, Prime Federation Force look at, of uh, Resident Evil look at something like I mean we've got lots of shooters and we've got lots of horror games horror games are are doing pretty well right now yeah. like yeah. Alien Isolation for instance like that. Did that do okay, or was that kind of a? I did pretty well. It did yeah. pretty well. So, I mean, yeah. surprisingly, considering it's a tense, like a, you know, and it's it's a recognized property. Yep. And Resident Evil, kind of like it, it at its core, it's you have guns and they're scary stuff, and maybe it's trying to balance that is too tricky and kind yeah. of the modern. Well, landscape. it's interesting I seeing. Think, I, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say like I you have to strip people's powers away, but you're yeah. totally right about uh, not only genre the genre stuff, but like or zombie stuff, but the the horror. Yeah. genre movement in video games right now especially with like let's plays and youtube what's Twitch happening streams. with until dawn right now it's I mean, huge. That, yeah. yeah and like huge. when pt was big but it's, it's yeah. interesting that even mikami moved on and made like evil within like yeah. i mean like that's like the spirit of resident evil is has kind of been pulled out of it and it yeah. has become this and evil kind within of sort genre. of felt like resident evil 4.5 with a lot of the psychological stuff that almost made it into resident evil 4. but right. uh, but it ought to be possible to to distill the essence of of what made the early games good and then recontextualize right. that for where technology and tastes are right now and create something Wonderful. Horror is timeless when done well. Mm-hmm. Good horror is hard to do. We, we, I mean, horror movies are generally bad, even though I love them. There's very few really good well, ones. Right. But you can do it, and Capcom has the resources to pull right. it off. And, and there's things like Five Nights at Freddy and uh, all these random Fear things the that Walking pop Dead up. Fear the Walking Dead premiered yeah. a month yeah. ago. It was the hi- it was the hi- biggest television premiere in history, and mm-hmm. that show is unobjectively bad. It is uh, not a yeah. good show. Whereupon you look at something like Penny Dreadful, and somebody's doing it right right now. That yeah. is a solid... Have you watched that? Yeah. Oh, man. That is a solid TV I watched, I watched like three, four of the first season. Oh, okay. it's uh, the second season. I think is better. It's okay. it's really good. Yeah, or it's the a really strain, which is again not a great show. Yeah. Um, I also popular. just want to interject and plug. Uh, Brian did an interview with Taryn Killam from SNL at PAX. Oh, that's uh, right. Where they just talked about Resident Evil memories for like five minutes. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really it's, weird. It's really weird to walk up to like a guy you look up to like in comedy and then be like, Hey, remember those weird white gorillas in the basement? <laughs> yeah. of Resident Evil Zero? And he's like, Yeah, totally. I'm like, Let's talk about that. Those go in the um, category of stuff that you like to talk about a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's really there's they, there's things that Brian likes to talk. About. About. There's William Howard Taft, the president who died in a bathtub. I actually yep. didn't know his full name. 
Uh, there's a. Uh, I might be saying. I might be wrong. I might forgot the middle name. And there's uh, there's the the snake on Dagobah <laughs> that Brian is convinced Yoda has what? sex with. And there's horses. I don't think William and Howard Taft is... actually died in a bathtub. He just got he, he got, got stuck, stuck in a bathtub. he yeah. got stuck in. But one. Okay. Exactly. that's actually that that's kind of that's the beginning of worse. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's actually yeah. worse. Um, oh, but also, I've heard that story was just a political creation okay. by his enemies. Do you guys yeah. know about that sandwich oh, that uh, the Elvis Presley ate? Yes. Yeah, the fried banana and the pickle, the fool's gold loaf. So yes, eight thousand calories sandwich. Was that poop soup? <laughs> no, so, he, you know, he flew. It was he, he, was he dropped some poop soup after that. <laughs> yeah. But he flew to Denver one night for an eight thousand calorie uh, no, 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 hold peanut on, butter hold jelly on, sandwich hold on, hold that had bacon. Let me, let me back this up. So he was hanging out at Graceland with a couple of cops because Elvis really liked cops. Yeah, so he, he was rolled, hanging yeah. out with them and he was telling them about this one diner in the middle of nowhere, like wherever it was out on some outskirts where they had a thing called the gold brick, which was an entire loaf of bread hollowed out, filled with peanut butter, a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, and a side of bacon, and yeah. then deep fried. Yeah. And he was like. Well, man, this is really, really good sandwich. We got to try it. And these cops are like, "Yeah, it's um, I, I sure, I guess." And he's like, "Hold on a second. He calls up his p- private jet, gets in his private jet, flies to wherever this is, gets out of the jet, gets in a limo, drives to the diner, and eats two of them." Did he take the cops with him? Yeah, he brought them with him. That's he's awesome. Like, oh, yeah, okay. he's like, he, he ate two, two of them. He ate two of them. Yeah, he ate two that of them. I don't, I don't 16, know how many thousand calories. calories. Yeah, that's enough yeah. food for a month. So anyway, uh, you like <laughs> uh, enough food for a month. Yeah, you get <laughs> to about, most a, of a month. That's about a week for <laughs> a, a week, USRDA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also that's enough to crazy. kill you, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Well, that's an amazing story. Who's the what's what's his name? The Stephen Hawking. So for the longest time, while we're here and getting in my brain, I thought Stephen Hawking's name was Stephen J. Hawking, like a a 70s basketball player. That's awesome. And for the longest time, I was like, I was like, I read this interview with Stephen J. Hawking the other day, and people were like, that's not his middle of. He could have like a little ejector spring (laughs) in his chair so he could dunk, just like. (laughs) Hey guys, I'm Stephen J. Hawking, and I'm here to tell you about science through a robot voice. All right, that'd be awesome. Um, Hey, so he doesn't sound like a robot. I have to go to a meeting. Okay. Uh, That's a good excuse to leave your friends who are hanging out having a great I, time. I don't yeah. want to go to a meeting. Okay, we've got meeting right now. It's weird. Yeah, that well, was. Why do I watch between two days? Does anyone know what day it is? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, Tuesday. Wednesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> First day. Uh, it's all right, Friday. Want to go? I don't want to go. Do you want to say goodbye to our fine listeners who are you know? I love you, fine listeners. Hey, fine listeners. Uh, What's everybody doing? What's everybody working on? What are you guys right doing? Well, no, I, want, I want to end podcasting episode. with you guys. No, 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 I'm no, not no, trying to get prematurely. Yeah, keep going. Um, I can keep going. I'm, I'm, how long have we been going for? Let's, uh, no, 40 I don't minutes. think that long. Yeah, short, yeah, keep going, keep episode. going. I'm just, I'm going to have to exit, but you guys should keep going. All right, um, get the hell out of here, you damn okay. it. Uh, Before we go, Jared, yes. you are bringing an Essential 50 entry. Oh, very, I very very I'm not saying I want to end the podcast. You shouldn't end the podcast. You should keep going. No, no, no. I want you to get the hell out. You say yay or nay, and then you bounce. Get out. Okay, cool, cool. What's the answer? Silent Hill 2. Yeah. Oh, totally. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Get off of this. Show. I think Chloe would murder me if I said no to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think um, she would too. I love you guys. I love you, listeners. Yep. Probably gonna get some food after my meeting if you yeah. want to get some food. You, you don't, don't, don't need to know poop what you're doing. Poop the rest of yeah. Yeah. You can tweet poop super. Right. You can tweet at me about Dangarampa. Yeah. Uh, right. Thank you guys. I love you. All right. Bye. 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 See, See you, Andrew. See you. I love you. See you soon. Have a great day. Gosh. You too. I'll see you in like 20 minutes. God, I still love that analogy you had the other day. Of like, God, or I can't early. stand that guy. What I'm a little so glad he's rat gone. he is. I love God. the guy. I want to roll down a hill with him in my arms. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, was like, I was basically trying to get you guys away from me. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Um, no, I love you. You're okay. great. Yeah, so uh, Silent Hill 2. Yeah. No, Silent Hill 2. I, I, okay, so uh, this is an old PlayStation game. A lot of people may not have played it. You know, this is way back in the day. So really quickly, we talk a lot about games that are rated mature, you know, M for mature. Blah, blah, blah. This is one of the Peggy few times. Peggy 13. Time, yeah, Peggy 13. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, mature themes usually mean Kratos causing somebody to take their shirt off. You know that, that's that's most of what we get with mature themed games. Silent Hill Two, despite some, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, weird image I just, there. Yeah, I just realized that the European rating system. It, it sounds like a caveman saying how old his daughter is. It's just like <laughs> Peggy thirteen. <laughs> Peggy have birthday cake. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Peggy 18. Peggy <laughs> play FIFA. <laughs> Peggy start high school next year. So, you know those, Peggy uh, need prom date. You know those text, adve- text adventure games? No, there's... That's so good. Why? <laughs> there's... <laughs> there's, there's a whole text adventure game built around that. Peggy uh, need husband. That. You know, like, you have, like, the, the, the verb now, you know, uh, the... Like do this thing, like, you know, get pig or whatever. That, that's part of the game. <laughs> that's the syntax. It's like you can only use two. You can use a verb and you use a target. And the whole game is about a caveman and it's about trying to catch a pig. So it's like wow. get pig, and it responds huh. like pig get away. That one smart pig, <laughs> and you're just trying to get the pig. Baby they, smart I, pig. Yes, that's how right. the whole text adventure okay, so, works. All right, sorry. Yes, yeah, so I'm, anyway. I'm really, I'm really sorry. That's uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. So this is the Essential 50. We haven't done this bit in a while. The Essential 50 is 50 PlayStation games that we think you ought to play. Yeah. One of these is Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2 is a survival horror game. It's from back in the day. And it does handle something well that most games don't, and that's sex. Um, even though there's not any sex going on in the game, Silent Hill 2 approaches sexual themes in a very complicated and frightening way. It deals with the fact that we fundamentally are, from the time we hit puberty, both excited by and a little bit scared of sex. Yep. Um, and it latches onto that in a non-overt way that you do not see coming. Silent Hill 2, for a lot of the game, you don't really know what you're trying to accomplish. You're in the spooky town, but there's not really some quest or somebody you got to rescue or not really. I mean, there's stuff going on, but you're just kind of getting moved forward and you're this guy in the town. You don't really know much about who you are. And then you start encountering these 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 really frightening psychosexual images and you're like, where does this fit with what's going on? Eventually you end up at a blue velvet scene where you're in a closet and you're watching a monster rape uh, another monster and you're stuck there having to see this happen. And, and then you're like, oh, I feel icky, but I kind of want to look, but I don't. And then you get to a twist in the plot if you if you follow the game through a certain there's multiple endings one of which involves a talking dog spoilers but yeah, yeah. You, you are so bad about spoilers and yeah, you should play these games that i'm going to tell you the entirety yeah. of right now but i'm, I'm not going to spoil this moment um but there comes a time in the game where i think better than any video game ever the topic of sex relationships and the savage complexity that goes into what happens between uh people who decide to spend their lives together is brought to the forefront in a unpredictable, shocking, and gruesome way. Uh, and I remember sitting there watching this happen and feeling, video games never, feeling dirty. Mm -hmm. Not for playing the game, because the game's great, but like I have inhabited this kind of empty shell guy. At this point, they do a really good job of letting you imprint yourself on him. And I'm like, oh and you're complicit in something and it doesn't spell it out overtly and you're like maybe i'm did it for this reason but maybe for this and did you kiss the dog i no no the dog ending is just an alternate got it but uh, so that was a long spiel I, and like, talking around it makes it hard guys so just play this i've i've heard mm -hmm. like i've never played silent hill 2 yeah um i was way too scared of it when it came out uh yeah. and i've like kind of seen bits and pieces of it here and there but i've always kind of been like i'll play this one day uh, the HD remaster, I remember, was like a total nightmare because yeah. they decided that the fog that kind of helped with the atmosphere was uh, an artifact of a small draw distance or something. So uh, they decided to get rid of the fog, which it, kind of... Yeah, it was an artifact of a small draw distance, yeah. but that's what made it yeah, work. I mean, yeah. you're not Working in a lot of danger yeah. in Silent Hill 2. It's kind of hard to die, actually, once you know what you're doing. You, you, most of the enemies are not all that dangerous in most of the parts. But yeah, I, I know it's polygonal and rough and some of the voice acting is terrible, but the best way to go back hmm. to it is to go back to the original at this point, uh, in my opinion. Um, cool. And I know this. a lot of people aren't going to do it, but don't forget, you know, every PlayStation but the PlayStation 4 can play PS1 games. So go back and do this mm -hmm. uh, and find that, that good, true moment because there's multiple paths you can go down and it can end a lot of different ways. But when you figure out why you're there and what's going on and it does a great job of spelling out just enough to make you feel icky and not enough to make you feel certain and it's the uncertainty that fits the whole theme of sexual uncertainty in the game that is just brilliant that's very one rarely. of the things i think ambiguity in just in in fiction is incredibly important and there is a for lack of a better term there is a a really nerdy habit of trying to answer every question mm -hmm. and trying to kind of organize information and and not have that kind of that ball up in the air you know like i know a lot of people were like they, they want to know what's in Marcellus Wallace's suitcase. They want mm -hmm. to know what the end of Inception is, and they're going to right. work out these complex theories, but it's like, it's kind of a Schrodinger's cat thing where yeah. you, sh you shouldn't know. It's yeah. just, it's it it exists. I mean, they, a, made, they made three Star Wars movies specifically explaining why we didn't need to know any mm -hmm. of those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it actually actively makes things worse is to lose ambiguity in yeah. storytelling. Midi I mean, the, the yeah. best part of, of <laughs> yeah. Alien is we don't see the alien, you know? Yeah. Right. It's like, I kind of yeah. like the... That's like that's a that's a hell of a sales pitch for Silent Hill 2. So. Yeah, and it works well. You, you, know, you know what happened enough to feel terrified and not enough to know just how terrified you should feel. And that's right. that works so well. Hmm. And, and very, very, very few uh, uh, products in our medium have ever accomplished that. Cool. Uh, before or since. Um, yeah, so that's that's on the Thumbs essential up. fifty. Um, yeah. Do we have anything else we want to talk about at all? What are, uh, you guys, what are you guys playing these days? 
Uh, I'm switching back and forth between uh, Metal Gear and Mario Maker, which is really weird because they're very similar in a lot of ways in that they <laughs> completely you play as you a white guy. Play as a white guy. <laughs> who's got some facial hair. You can play uh, as a different character, but you got to go in the settings. You have a weird pet you can ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's either a horse or a, a dinosaur. I really like the image of Snake riding a dinosaur yep. across the desert. I hope that happens. Uh, there's a, a, a female uh, protagonist that doesn't speak much. Mm-hmm. Um, this list is running out of steam. No, but uh, there, it's really, it's. I, I just really love how you can sort of, and you don't really get this with movies as much because movies take ninety minutes to consume. But how you can jump back and forth between two games. Like mm-hmm. I try to stay away from playing two games at the same time, but it's interesting to do this right now because it just shows both of these games started uh, in the eighties. And they're still going now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And watching, seeing how each one has sort of evolved in, in their own directions, but still kind of maintained what they originally were, is really impressive to me to kind of see that, like, to bounce back and forth between a game like Metal Gear, which, like, pretty much is very sandboxy in that you have uh, end goal and you can diagonal and crisscross and spaghetti yeah. your way all around to get to that end goal. Uh, which even then, that end goal could be totally screwed up. And Mario Maker, which is basically like the same thing. Like you have a flagpole you need to reach. And any number of things can happen in between hmm. how you get there and how you get to the end. Um, and seeing like the user-generated stuff in Mario Maker is really smart. Yeah. You could get us so many angry emails that we're talking about a Nintendo game. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, so I'm talking about two games that are that I'm playing yeah. right now in our vernacular. Like I think it's Well, like, I mean, they're both, they're both games that start out on, on Nintendo platforms. Yeah. One of them became famous for being a, a yeah. PlayStation property, exactly. and now it's on four different systems. So, um, so and I, th- I, think it's, I think that's cool. I don't know if that's going to happen. Like I, I feel like in mid-November when I'm playing Tomb Raider and Fallout at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like I'll have that other similar moment where I'm mm-hmm. bouncing from one to the other. Well, uh, it's very weird to do that. One big problem with, with games is that they're so often compared to movies and TV and that they're a visual medium. Mm-hmm. But the reality is they're also a really cerebral medium and you yeah. really invest a lot of yourself in them in which that way they're much more like books. Yeah. Uh, and the rate at which you read a book requires a kind of a certain amount of, like you, you, you can sort of fall asleep reading a book but the book isn't going to finish itself if you yeah. do that you're always right. going to pick up where you left off yeah uh same goes with games you know you mm-hmm. kind of have to move that that character forward uh and i'm i don't know i i i that's an interesting point about kind of jumping between games i i did a really intense metal gear mission and i jumped into disney infinity right um which is uh at this point surprisingly i was kind of blown away about how complex of a kids game that is but it's a good like palate cleanser from playing. Oh, totally. No, and that's a profound analogy you just made. I really I really like that, uh, the, the book thing. That's that's really cool. I've never thought of it that I way I think before. that's why, I mean, not to get too deep into it, but I think it's why a lot of people have problems with um, female protagonists in games as a predominantly male-driven mm. audience that consumes games because they have trouble putting themselves into it. Like when I read hmm. a book and the main character's male, <clears throat> I can... I associate with him better, and I start putting in all of my own tendencies into his brain and his actions. And when he's doing something, I go, "Well, this is what he looks like." You know, you, you create characters in your head, and that's why when when books become movies, people have a lot of problems with casting all the time because it's never no, there's no right answer, right? Yeah. There's there's things that come close, but there's never like, "Oh, that's the perfect thing," because everyone has their own projection on it. And in Metal Gear, the way I'm playing that is that I'm playing that the way. I would handle that situation to an extent, given the fact that it's a completely ridiculous world. But uh, like, I'm characterizing that character in a way I see fit for myself. And I think when people see a game like Tomb Raider, they're like, "Well, I'm not a woman. Now that's I don't fast- know who I don't know who this is or what I would do in this scenario." That's fascinating for me because generally when I play games, I tend to, I, if there's an option for a female protagonist, I'll usually play one, me and too. it's because I like. But I like trying to project something different than myself. Me too, it's a sort of a, 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 a identity escapism. That's, that's exactly what I was going to use because I think that that's very important for me. Like, uh, it's one thing I think in, in in certain types of books you can put yourself into the character, but mm-hmm. like in sort of fantasy escapism, like it's so far from your reality that that's the point. Yeah. Like you are trying to actively get away from something that it's so so unique to your own life. You know. Um. So that yeah, like yeah. I think like when I play Tomb Raider, I'm like, well, I've never been to the top of a Tibetan monastery as it's crumbling. So I don't know what that's like. So yeah, I'll be a girl. Yeah. Because this is so far from my own reality that who cares at this point. Another thing is, is also point of view. You yeah. know, like a first person game, you're gonna feel, like I was just thinking about this, uh, I was playing Metal Gear and um, my fiance was watching me and I was I was just in the in the helicopter and I think there was sort of a cut scene with, with Quiet doing something and the, the camera started moving and she's like, who's, who are you? 
playing who are you seeing this from whose perspective is this and mm -hmm. i was like it's a fake cameraman yeah mm -hmm. and then you think about it and i was i was kind of like i screw up at metal gear all the time and i get caught and it's because somebody you know behind me doesn't see me but the reality is that i could i can control where the camera is completely right. which is such a bizarre concept because it's like if you can if you were playing it first person like first person stealth sucks because you, you don't have peripheral you. vision yeah. you know uh but then it's sort of like what you're not really playing as snake you're no. playing as you're playing as a camera guy who's telling him where to go yeah, you know? yeah. You're playing I, was as thinking, like a, I was thinking that exact same thing i was i was ducked behind a, a small like sandbag wall in mm -hmm. metal gear and i spun the camera 360 degrees around me and i was like that actually kind of breaks it for me. The, I mean, I know it's important because it helps the game. Because yeah. otherwise you get caught constantly. But that kind of breaks it for me. I can't qualify why, but Thief somehow managed to pull that off. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. First, It did pull off first-person yeah. stealth, and it didn't feel awkward. Weird. I the, new, the new one? No, no, uh, the old one. The original? Uh, yeah, Thief yeah. 2 especially. Thief okay. 2 yeah. would be the, well, that's the gold kind of, standard. That's what a lot of people um, claim that Dishonored kind of was the successor. Yeah, to and, I can't, and I can't figure out why, though. I, I don't have a mechanical explanation. I've never studied yeah. it. But it does totally work, and, and, and it totally yeah. doesn't in Metal Gear. I, don't know I didn't think about the cameraman thing. It's really interesting. Uh, one of the first sort of 3D games ever made uh, was Super Mario 64, and the game starts with, and I don't know who's filming him, but it starts with a shot of Lakitu in a cloud holding a camera yeah and it pulls back down and the and you zooms out and you see behind mario and you go oh lakitu's filming this entire game like they answered that question in 1996 by going this game has a cameraman we're going to show him to you yeah uh but no game has really done that since well like, they can make very that odd. well that mario's really, had this yeah it'd be a really cool mechanic where there is the camera is a cameraman and you have to sort of protect him yeah, yeah. or even now you enemies can, just, can run into the camera didn't, and didn't knock it michigan over. do that the 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 uh, grasshopper game uh, for the ps2 the horror game i think they did oh i think like so that. yeah yeah i think the, they did something that, so, who made huh. that? uh suda yeah, yeah but i think it it actually played with that a little bit yeah i mean now i mean you could just basically have like a little droid following you in the air like you you could justify that any way you know that could be a drone robot that's filming the entire game for you like mm -hmm. but they never bake that in and that's really interesting because i know when you're specifically in the helicopter in metal gear and you're you're you bring the dog who's like one of the only pets you're allowed to bring I'm, it sucks you can't put the horse in there <laughs> <I always want laughs> <that. Be amazing. laughs> he's just there when you show up but you and the dog are in the in the helicopter together and uh, it shows it zooms to your perspective where you're looking at the dog but you can also rotate around where it shows snake sitting over there with the little cassette icon over him and you're like is this is dog cameraman? <laughs> is this dog man camera time? Uh, that would be amazing. Right. I, and it's just, it's that, like it's really interesting to think about that kind of stuff because cameras are in every game and you don't think about who's controlling them. No, um, you don't. Yeah. That's anyway, bad. uh that got that's, deep. Yeah, we got deep for a second. For uh, that kinda that compensated fun. for the poop soup. Sorry about the poop soup, everyone listening at home. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter and the, which is which is a kind of a poop soup of its own yep. of social media. Uh, <laughs> I like Twitter. I'm Max Scoville on there. Brian is Agent Bizzle. That's right. Jared is Petty, comma, Jared. And the uh, the late, the great Andrew Goldfarb is Garfep. Uh, if you want to um, talk to him about um, Dam Dambo Rum Bum Bum. He's, like, he's Rum like Tiny Tim. I see an empty chair and a pair of crutches by the door. Um, yeah, we'll be so back sad. next week. Uh, if you want to email us, we are just beyond at IGN. Please yep. don't send us dog names. We have more than enough of those to go around. Yep. Uh, a lot of you guys wanted to name your dogs after Brian, which was kind of funny. That's fine. Um, and, of course, there that. is the Podcast Beyond Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash podcast beyond. Yep. Is that it? Cool. Yep. Uh, on that note, beyond. 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 Goodbye. Might be on Wi-Fi. That might be it. I'm on silent. My Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right. <laughs>